here that I'll pull up real quick. Um, so as many of you are probably aware, um, in December, Congress passed a five-year transportation bill, um, and the president uh, then signed it uh, shortly after that. Um, and so we, and it's called the FAST Act. Prior to that, we had what was called MAP 21, and that was uh, funding for fiscal years 13 and 14. So we had no dedicated funding source once that bill expired. We were just operating under what they call continuing resolutions, and they, they may have been six months or up, maybe up to a year, but we had many uh, multiple. Um, continuing resolutions, which made it difficult for us as a department to do any long-term planning because there was no guaranteed funding for whatever we may be planning more than six months or a year out. So we were excited to get a five-year transportation bill. And if we look at it funding-wise, um, so this covers fiscal year 16 through 20. Um, in the first year, we jumped from $329 million to $346 million. That's a 5.1% increase in funding. Um, and then each subsequent year um, after that, there's about a 2.1 to a 2.4% increase. And so the cumulative increase over the five years of the bill is a 15.1% increase in federal funding. Um, so you know that is definitely um, a positive. Um, we're excited about that. And I'll show you in some graphics a little bit later um, how those increases um, are affecting the, the money that's available to the local governments. So um, the, the FAST Act bill is very similar in nature to the old bill, MAP 21. Um, there's no changes in the distribution formulas for how that money is uh, distributed out to the states. Um, all states remain donee states, so that means that we'll receive back more federal dollars uh, for transportation than we pay in federal gas taxes. That doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. That's where um, bullet item number uh, four comes in to, to fund this bill, they're going to have to do $70 billion in general fund transfers um, to cover it. Um, the problem with doing general fund transfers is when this bill expires, um, unless they have another bill signed and ready to go and funding identified, which they typically don't from past experience, they're going to have to do those continuing resolutions we talked about. And so not only will they have to do the continuing res resolution, they're either going to have to cut funding to what um, the, the federal gas tax generates, or they're going to have to come up with other uh, bailouts, um, either from the general fund or other areas, to fund us at the level that we're at in 2020 when the bill expires. Um, so we're, we're good for five years, but beyond that, you know, we don't know. So um, there just seems to be no political will to um, raise the federal gas tax to cover the needs of transportation. Um, so we get keep getting stuck with these, these bailouts that um, are always difficult to um, renew and, and buy new money. From. So fortunately in Utah, we were one of the few states that actually passed a, a gas tax increase last year, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, so if we look at these uh, in 20, under the 2015 column, these are the programs underneath the old MAP 21 funding bill. And in the 2016 to 2020, this is the FAST Act and how those programs um, are affected. So as you can see, there's a lot of continuations. So I had said that the two bills were very similar, and they are. But there are a few um, changes. So the, the Surface Transportation Program, um, that is being changed to a block grant program. And essentially what that is, is, is Federal Highways will give us a large sum of money with general provisions on how that money is to be spent. So it's going to be up to the states um, to decide more than it's ever been before how to best to spend that money on their roads um, and bridges. Um, this is something the states have been asking for for a long time. Um, in meetings with, with UDOT and stuff, you've probably heard them say, well, we can't do that with this color of money. Um, and that's because before it was very prescriptive. With this money, you can only do this, this, and this activity. Um, and the states have been petitioning Federal Highways for a long time to give us the freedom to do what we need to do with the money. And this is a step in that direction. So we were excited about that. Um, the next one is the Transportation Alternatives Program. And this is a, a program that uh, it used to be called the Enhancement Program. And it can be used to do enhancements to transportation facilities, um, to build bicycle and pedestrian facilities that are um, adjacent to, to roads and stuff like that. And, and with MAP 21, it used to have its own dedicated fe uh, funding source or line item um, within the funding. And all they're going to do is it's now going to be folded into the STP block grant program that I talked about before.
before. So from you all's perspective, we're still going to call it the TAP program. Um, it's still the same items are going to be eligible for that. There'll be a similar amount of money available. Um, it's just from the programming side, it won't have its own line item. It'll be rolled underneath the, the block grant. So program. is this the same T21 program? The transportation no. Enhancement? No, T21 was before MAP 21. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the last one I want to mention is the National Highway Freight Program. This is a brand new program um, where they're going to be providing funding to the states um, to uh, help identify a plan for and uh, build projects that will facilitate more effective and efficient freight, whether that's rail, air, traffic, um, cars, trucks, um, across the nation. Uh, I don't have a lot of details on that program, um, but we do have a gentleman, his name's Daniel Kuhn, um, that's in our central office, and that's what he spent his career uh, doing. And over the last couple of years, he's developed a statewide freight plan, so we're kind of ahead of the curve on this. So he'll be uh, using this new freight, national freight program um, from Federal Highways along with the state-specific freight plan that he has created um, uh, to uh, facilitate uh, efficient, effective uh, freight movement here in the state of Utah and across the nation. So that's, that's pretty important for us because we're the crossroads of the West where we've got I-80, I-15, the crosses right there. So much freight comes in and out and around um, the state of Utah. And so um, that funding and that program will help us to that end. So, um, the other thing I need to mention before I, we go to the graphics to show the actual dollars um, is that with this uh, program, with the, with the STP money, um, that's where the majority of the federal money um, is available for the local governments. Um, typically it was split 50-50, so 50% went to UDOT to fund uh, state roads, and then the other 50% went to the local governments uh, for their roads. Um, with this bill, that distribution is going to be shifting. So. Each year of the bill, 1% is one percent more is going to go to local governments. So by the time we get to the end of the five-year bill, local governments will be getting 55% of the money, you will be getting 45% of the money. So that's uh, a, a pretty good deal uh, for the local governments. So let's uh, jump and look at what that means as far as actual dollars. So I've got uh, this same sheet um, for fiscal years 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So if we look um, here at the, the distribution, areas by population, 51%. As we advance through, it goes to 52, 53, 54, 55%. And the dollars amounts are also increasing, uh, corresponding with those uh, percentage increases. So with the STP funding, we get about $92.5 million. Um, in fiscal year 16. Um, UDOT gets 49% of that, so that's about 43.3 million. And off the top, we take $2 million, and that goes to fund the off-system bridge program. So that's money that comes out of UDOT's pocket and goes back into the local government bridge system. So that's a, a benefit towards um, the locals, that le leaving UDOT with 43.3 million. Um, with the local government portion, 47.2 million, uh, 35 million goes to the urbanized areas. Those are populations over 200,000, and those uh, monies are distributed through the Wasatch Front Regional Council and the Mountain Land Association of Governments. Um, the non-urban uh, is areas between zero and 5,000 population. Um, there's five million dollars there, and that money is uh, distributed through the Joint Highway Committee non-urban um, subcommittee. There's probably a, a you in here that are smaller towns, maybe Charles, Charleston, you guys under 5,000 population, so that you would qualify for that uh, non-urban Joint Highway Committee money. Um, and then the small urban is populations between 5,000 and 200,000, um, so the Joint Highway Committee, um, so there's small urban subcommittee gets 3.2 million, then the Cash and Dixie smaller MPOs get a portion uh, of that money as well. Are there any questions um, on the, the STP funding? What I would do now is just to have you look at look at the dollar amount that corresponds with what funding you would be available for. So if, if you're Charleston, you're going to be wanting to look at that $5 million. 
Um, if you're uh, bigger, say you're between 50,000 and um, uh, or 5,000 and 50,000, uh, you're going to look at that 3.2 million. And I'm going to advance this each year through the bill, and you can kind of see how that dollar amount grows. So for Charleston, um, that's non-urban. You're going to start out with 5 million that you could apply for. I'm just going to go to 5.3. 5.4, 5.7, and then 5.9. So it's going to grow uh, almost 20% over the five years in the bill. So that's pretty significant um, uh, growth um, for you all having that money available. So any questions before I'm, and then I'm going to pull up one on the tap. Any questions on that before we go to the tap? Okay. Uh, so the tap money, as we talked about, it's a lot smaller. It's 6.6 .6 million versus the 92.5 million of the STP money. And as you recall, we talked, it's for doing enhancement type projects, you know, bicycle, pedestrian facilities, uh, enhancement type things. Um, just, there's not enough money there to build a roadway. Um, so with that 6.6 .6 million, off the top, 1.6 million dollars goes to fund the recreational trails program. That's an optional trail program that the governor of Utah decided that they want to opt in and, and fund. Um, and so with the rec trails program, that can be used to fund both motorized and non-motorized trail systems. And what's a little bit different than with the rec trails program than the TAP program? Is the TAP money, if you're gonna, you have to be building a bike or ped facility that is adjacent. Um, to a roadway. With the rec trails program, it can be a trailhead that is perpendicular to the, the roadway and goes off into the, you know, the forest or a marsh or whatever. Um, so there's more flexibility in, in what that money can be used for the type of trails. Um, if you look, uh, I was hoping this year to have Chris Howler come um, and do a presentation um, and he was ready to go up to the last minute and then he had a change in responsibilities and it's not going to be able to come this year. Um, I can tell you that he um, he told me that the deadline is right around the 1st of May. So it's you've still got a couple weeks if you wanted to apply for this program, but you would need to get in contact with him immediately to find out you know, what the application uh, requirements are to get that. So what what was his name again, please? It's called Chris Haller. I can help you with that. Thank you. And I can say Marks. Yeah, okay. Did, did you want to say anything about that that I haven't already? Well, just the, the deadline is May 1st, and it's a little, it's a little bit of a form, but I can mm -hmm. send it to you, too. If you is want. that for and all it is of on, it? No, that's just for the RTP. Just, that's that's just, just for that 1.6 million, the red trails. Yeah. 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 What about the deadline for safe sidewalk, which is a safe route, so this mm -hmm. half million there? That, I don't know the specifics about that. You, you'll need to uh, to apply for safe uh, routes to school money. You would talk to uh, Robert Miles in our Central Traffic and Safety Division. They're the ones that oversee um, those funds. Um, and I'm not exactly sure on the process of how they do that, if they're programming out one year, three years, or whatnot. With this new bill, um, a lot of things are changing in the past we didn't have any dedicated funding source, so a lot of programs were only funding one year at a time. But now that we've got a five-year bill, they're programming out like three years now. So um, that's a lot of things are changing because of that, and, so, and I, I don't know um, have the answer for that one for you. Oops. So if we um, if we look at that, so after the rec trails money comes out, that leaves five million dollars. Uh, two and a half million goes to UDOT, and of that, um, pretty much all of that is being made um, or going back into the local governments. Um, there's the half million dollar Safe Routes to School program um, that's going to be um, building projects to provide safe routes to kids in our communities. Um, and then the remaining two million dollars um, is divided um, into uh, to our four different regions that cover the state, um, and each region um, uh, can use those dollars. Um, to do TAP eligible type projects. Um, and so here in Region 3, they're using that money uh, focusing on bicycle and pedestrian uh, facilities um, within uh, the communities, both uh, the local gover on local government system and or um, along the state routes. Right? Did, did I say anything wrong or did you want to add anything? We have a couple projects in the valley that are related to that. Here, 
your here in Hebrew Valley. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I won't steal your thunder then. <laughs> okay. And then the um, and then the two and a half million that goes to the local governments again. Um, that's distributed out uh, similar to the STP money. So, 1.87 million dollars goes to the the urbanized areas over 200,000 population. Uh, and then 630,000 is available to the small MPOs in the Joint Highway Committee. So as you can see, once it trickles down and gets, um, you know, for like the, the Joint Highway Committee, they're only getting $440,000 each year um, for projects. Um, so that, that's not a lot of money, but there is enough to do um, certain enhancements and things that you can't do with other STP dollars. Yes? So like the Murdoch Canal Trail, could could not use anything other than rec trail funds? Uh, it, if it's not parallel... It's got to be part of a facility. Yeah, that's that's my understanding. It's got to be parallel to a, a roadway of some type. Yeah. So, and that's where the rec trails comes in, potentially, if you've got something that's going to go perpendicular and off, off in the weeds. Now, you could use the tap money, say, for uh, putting up, uh, building a trailhead with a kiosk and stuff. Um, and then use the rec trails money to actually build the trail that goes off beyond the road. So not a railroad. How about that kind of road? No, 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 no not a railroad. <laughs> but the railroad is next to a road. That's where the beginning would be. That was that's where the trailhead would be, right next to the road where the railroad also sits. Yeah. But then it goes off, you know, out, away from roads. But then in other places, it's back next to a road. So how would that work? Road. Yeah, crosses roads. That's we would have to we would have to look at that um, specific example, um, and then I would probably have to take it to Federal Highways to get a determination where it's kind of not following exactly, but it's coming mm -hmm. back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to take that specific example to Federal Highways and get their buy off and approval, and then it, if they approved it, then you can go ahead and apply for it. And what what is that process as far as timing and so forth? Uh, so so the Joint Highway Committee uh, funding. Um, is available. The, the application period begins around the 1st of October each year and it closes the second Friday in January. Um, so start thinking about it this spring, this summer. Um, you can apply in uh, the fall and then the deadline is the second Friday in January. So this last year it was January 8th. Um, and then once all the applications are brought in, we, the subcommittees have meetings in February typically where they make selections. Uh, for projects based off of the funding that's available and then once those uh, selections are made then they go to what's called the full joint highway committee that's the 30 member group that we talked about at the beginning of this meeting um, and they have the, the final um, decision making approval through the joint highway committee um, and that doesn't occur till april so this year's meeting isn't until next friday um, so the, the applications that came in this fall will be reviewed by them and approved this friday and then it goes to the Transportation Commission um, next, and then it goes into a draft step, and after it follows our regular step process after that. So if yes. we have a trail that's by a railroad and partially road, is it better to just apply for red trails? Or, I mean, can a combination of funds, or what is the best? Yeah, you can apply, you can compl uh, apply for a combined uh, funding sources, um, and we do encourage that um, uh, where it makes sense. So, so the money, if it was applied for this coming January for next year, when would that money be available if it worked its way through and was accepted? So the, the, the TAP money, we're programming one year out, okay? Uh, the STP money, which was the bigger pot of money, those projects are programmed five years out, so you're going to have to wait five years to actually get those. The rec, the rec Trails program, I don't know how far they program theirs out. What if we had a trail that was going to cost more than <laughs> the 1.6 million? Could it be funded over a several year time period? Would they accept that kind of application? Would they accept a three year I, application funding? Or would it have I to be can't, I can't answer for the rec trails. Um, okay. You'd have to talk to Chris Haller. I know through the, through the Joint Highway Committee, they do consider, um, I've seen it go both ways where they've requested Multiple funding over multiple years, mm -hmm. um, and I've also seen where they only approve a phase of a project at a time. So you have to apply each time for okay. each phase. 
think it all kind of depends on how many applicants they get, how much mm -hmm. demand there is. Because sure. if there's, you know, if there's a lot of applicants and there's a small pot of money, they may choose to give um, well, fund multiple projects mm -hmm. to multiple um, sure. entities rather than give it all to one. Sure. Thank you. So, yes. On trails that are applied for, are there any restrictions uh, such as can you charge a toll to use a trail? Um, I don't think you, I don't know, I mean, I, I haven't read anywhere this answer, but my gut take is no, you're using public funds to fund and build that, so if you're going to turn around and, and, and take a toll for that, <laughs> then, you know, that money should be coming back to the, the federal source that paid for the trail. You know, and, and as far as you, you can say, well, we're going to tell it for future maintenance. Well, then you can just come back and apply for money to do upgrade maintenance type things for the, the trail and that point. So, I'm pretty sure that's what Federal Highways' the answer will be. Chris, yes, are Sean? the local governments notified by the Joint Highway Committee that these grants are available on a certain date? Is every local government notification via UDA? No. Since UDA staffs Joint Highway Committee? They they don't we we try and um, you know so at this meeting last year um, that's one of the things that we uh, covered we covered that we try and hit on this in, in the visits every year to just make people aware um, we we spend a lot of time training on our website where to go if you go to if you just do a Google search for U dot local government assistance it'll bring you to our uh, local government assistance webpage that's on our website and that's a one stop shop for everything related to uh, local governments um, and so we put a call for applications there so we're trying trying to train folks um, to go to these places because uh, it's uh, it gives them better faster service for one and for two it's it's a lot less work for us because if we try and maintain a mailing list and send stuff like that out to everybody it's costly it takes a lot of time to up, update and maintain that um, and then there's never a guarantee that we're going to hit everybody in, everyone so uh, just for these local government visits we have a mailing list of about 700 people and we you know every year we have to go and update all that because a lot of the folks that are invited are local elected officials and there's been elections and people change um, and, and in the invitation that we send out we ask them to go to their city council meetings and go to their different public meetings and spread the word and invite everybody that would be interested in, in transportation to come to these meetings but even then, we still, yesterday I was in, in uh, Davis County and the Farmington mayor didn't get notified because there was a change in his staff at some point and the letter got thrown away and the new person didn't get it and, and stuff. So, um, you know, if we start mailing it out, then we're going to have more and more of those situations where, well, I didn't find out, I didn't find out, and then everyone's pointing at us, like, well, you need to do a better job updating your database and stuff. So we're, we're trying to do the, you know, direct everyone to our website, and this is where all the information is going to be. Where is it located on the website? Let me let me show you. I will pull it up right now. Sounds like we got a lot of interest Yeah, definitely. I think you can probably contact the League of Cities and Towns and the, and the County Council group. Where they go? Oh yeah. So she's also a city counties. They've got transportation committees, and they and they participate very actively on that on that committee for those monies. In years past, we would often get a letter about this time of year for safe sidewalk applications. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know, and that's a different program through our traffic and safety division, and I don't know um, if they still do that. Is that any different than your safe routes program that you've identified there? Well, that that's not. That's just where the funding's coming to fund that safe routes to school program. We don't. I don't administer that. The Joint Highway Committee doesn't administer that. That's just where the money's coming for our traffic and safety division to manage that program. It's the same program. Yeah. It's the same program. If I were you folks, I'd take a, a real good look at those monies that are awarded this year by the Joint Highway Committee to see if the measure of their projects, what they look like. And look at it and see that it parallels in any way your projects and uh, help you plan your own project. Because they're going to come in all kinds of configurations. Some of them may be very like your own. You can commingle monies for the different kinds of costs if you do it right. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, uh, Shane Marshall, uh, the deputy director of UDOT, is the chairman of the Joint Highway Committee at the present time. 
I don't know how big that committee is. I used to be on, but I can't remember. There's 30, 30 or 40. Yeah. Yeah, I'll call Shane. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying Shane probably would be well versed on it. He would be because he does this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you just type in in your search engine Utah local government assistance, click on that, and it's going to be this top link. So just click on that local government assistance, and this is our this is the the web page on our website that's dedicated specifically to local governments. So if you come in here, like for today's annual visits. You can click on this, and this is the schedule of all the visits. So if you couldn't make it to today's visit, you could maybe go to an adjacent county visit and say Summit County or Utah County and get a lot of the same information. You won't get the project-specific discussions for your county because we're here in another county's visit, but all this stuff we're talking about, you could get in any other visit. So can I ask you, is this the only place you post this meeting? Or do you have to post it on the public meeting notice website somewhere? I have a, uh, we've got an administrative assistant uh, and she sends out, we, like I said, we have a mailing list of like 700 people that she sends it out to. She may post it there as well. I don't know. Sure. Well, because there were a lot of people that didn't even know this meeting was happening today. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, I checked around the public meeting notice website to the county or Heber City or anybody that's, that's locally. Yeah, and if that's the only place we can find it, that'd be good to know for the public because yeah, they can didn't even know. That and we can get it posted there as well. Well, there's a UDOT public meeting notice webpage for you guys to post it there, and it wasn't posted. There were other meetings probably, posted. It's probably not being posted. So, so maybe I could clarify that it's not necessarily an event intended for the public. The public can attend, but it's not. I mean, we'd probably have to change locations and we'd notice it That's, differently. Because yeah. we do many meetings that the public can attend, but the purpose isn't necessarily to notify the public. Okay. Also on here, so um, all the presentations that we um, are going to cover today, they're all here on a PDF as well. So you can come here and, and, and review these after the fact. You don't have to necessarily, I've had people up there taking pictures of each slide. Yeah. You've seen that happen. You can actually come here and print it Great. out. So I mean, it's a pretty big PDF, so it's taking a, a minute, so you'll have to try some more. Um, but it is there. Uh, so if we come down here to the Joint Highway Committee Programs, and down here at the bottom, this is where the, the um, application, call for applications was um, for this last year. Um, when I use, um, if I use uh, internet, I need to use, uh, if I use Firefox as the search engine, then <coughs> For whatever reason, it messes up the dates and stuff. So if those dates look messed up, just change the search engine. That's the reason why. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it did that, but um, if you just change the search engine, the dates will be right. But that's what the call for applications looks like. Um, you can get the applications here. Um, you can download them um, in either a PDF or a, a Word document. This is what the application looks like. You just fill it out. Um, and then there's also a... Excel spreadsheet um, that everyone is required um, to use. It's the same spreadsheet that we use to 